All right, this is our Protomax made by Omax. Um, this will be the operations instructions. So the first thing is, is you must be present and attentive while it's running, because if it clogs, it starts spraying water everywhere, and people around you may not appreciate that. So the first step is to make sure you've turned the water on. So the water is at the bottom of this blue knob, and when it's running parallel to the knob, that's when it's on. You could check the water pressure here, but it's not been an issue. Uh, let's see, next step, fill the tank to the top just below the slats. So the nozzle is here. We'll give it a couple of an inch of water. We can flood it on the uh, setting, just let it run. So you adjust the water level here, so you want to make sure that the orange knob is above the, the top of where you're filling to. Alright, then we will check the garnet to make sure there's enough garnet. It does have a concave shape to it, so it's best to open and look inside. So our water level looks good enough. So the next step is to turn the main circuit power on, which is located behind the TV. So that power's on, and then you can turn the power on to the unit. You want to make sure that make is closed before you turn the power on, otherwise you'll have to reset the PC, but that takes less than a minute. So then open Max. Not max open make. And then the machine needs to be homed before it'll let you do anything. So at the top there's a red box. You click that and it'll take it a minute to to find home. So then your next step would be to rat in. And then you want to make sure that the garnet hose line is firmly pushed into the back of the nozzle. Um, you may find that it's been disconnected because of the previous person had uh, drained the nozzle to make sure the garnet was not there. It should push in, push in about a quarter of an inch, and, and you'll feel it after you do it a few times. So once it's homed, the next step would be to move it using the arrow keys, and if you hold the shift button down, it will move faster. Position it somewhere between slats, because if you do the test while it's over a slat, it will cut the slat. As you can see, the slats have been cut fairly good by now. So then the next step would be to close the door, which you push up on the bottom of the knurled nut here on the end, and then the, the door will close. So now we're going to run a test. So you want to do test the cutting head, and so it's not flush plumbing, because flush plumbing does a reset of the system. And next, and start the test. 
So you'll see water come out and you want to look to see if there's garnet running in the line. It's a very thin line, but it kind of looks like a sparkle in the line. Well, that looks good. All right, so our next step is then to position the material. So you can align the material to the lower left-hand corner, which is pretty close to the machine zero. Then you want to insert the, the clamps. So the more clamps, the better, because loose material will bounce up. Okay, you can set the height now, or you can load your file. We'll load the file. File, open, and we'll run the logo. This is eighth inch material, so in the, in the screen, this is where you change the material style. So we have aluminum, 6061, it's an eighth inch thick. The tool offset is half of the kerf, usually doesn't get changed, but it's if, if it's been modified, just verify that it's 0 .013 inches. That will bring in the file. And this is where you can check the size of the, the uh, how long it will take, the amount of material, and the... Uh, width of path. This is probably too large, so we should go back and change the size. Um, hit the stop. Video. So the next would be to set the height, the Z height of the nozzle. You can flip up the, uh, the rubber ball cover so you can have better access to it. Hold on to the Z travel as you're lowering it because it can slam down and, and damage the nozzle so you want to set it so that it's just it's just resting or touching push in on the the bracket because it will move a lot when you crank down and then tighten it and then the the z gauge should be slightly loose Okay, the next step is we can execute a dry run. So we want to bring our tip to our starting point, to our path start. So with this layout import, the path start is at the bottom left-hand corner. So you hit begin machining. Stop it. Stop. Video. So this is the procedure for recovering from a clog. You'll know a clog has occurred because you don't hear the right sound and water usually will be backtracking up out the garnet spray. So the first thing we do is Remove the, the cup, then remove the nozzle, which may need a wrench. Video? Video. All right. So once your item is done, you can close out of the screen so that you can move the nozzle away from your material. Because this is a fairly full piece of material, we can't really move it too far. So then lift the lid, make sure that it falls, lift the Z so that you can see what you're doing. You can start lowering the level of the water by dropping the, the nozzle down. And you can clean off the excess garnet off the top 
And you can see what we just cut. Paper. Then remove the hold downs. And these are just held in place with a simple quarter turn in the slots. So this is eighth inch aluminum that has a paper cover. So once the water level gets just below the top of the slats, you can bring the lid back up. I have some editing to do with audio. And then now we're prepared for shutdown. So we want to move the, the jet, the, the nozzle again into a spot that's not directly over a slat. And now we're going to remove the nozzle. I mean the, uh, God, lots of audio going to change. <laughs> we're going to remove the garnet tube so that we can now flush the system out. So we're going to pull the garnet tube out. We have a little cap to plug the garnet, put it out of the way. Now we're going to run the test again, and this should clean the nozzle. You only need to run it for a few seconds. So we should be all set now. So we can close the software out. That's the layout. And now we want to clean the machine. So you can spray as much as you can to get as much of the garnet to fall down. Clean the channels for the T-slot so the next guy that is going to put a bracket to hold down. Close the machine. Shut off the main po the power to the Protomax. Shut off the power to the breaker, and then shut the water off, and you should be all set. All right, you might as well stop it then. Sure. All right. So the nozzle is now inserted backwards. You're going to have to remove the garnet tube from both ends because most likely it's been filled with wet garnet and it's water. Then you need to remove the drop tray, which has a knurled nut underneath. Just loosen it and then it will drop and the excess garnet can be dropped in. The same as in the bottom of the nozzle, the tube also pushes on here. So you remove the tube and then run compressed air through the nozzle to dry it. So the nozzle, the line should be dry. Then we can put the cork back in the tip. 
and then because the bottom of the garnet is probably wet as well. This is the fun part. You need to disconnect the ground strap, which is a knurled nut. This, the uh, same knurled nut, but it's a different size, so you don't want to mix them. Then you can remove the garnet trap and you need to dump all the garnet out. And you want to make sure that the bottom is dry. You could run air through. That looks dry. Then put the garnet hopper back in, put the Venturi tube for the garnet line, push it back in the same about a quarter of an inch, attach the ground strap, the garnet sieve back on. Make sure there's no wet garnet. You can dump the garnet back in. And then you should see garnet dropping into the hole in the back. Come around all the way into here. Let me get the flashlight. So there's a larger hole on the back side of the garnet drop. So you can see garnet is now dropped down like an hourglass into the garnet drop location. Then put the garnet shield back on, just pops up, slide it forward, tighten the knurled nut. So now the line should be dry. So now we're going to run a test run to see if we can unclog the nozzle. So the nozzle is in upside down. We're going to run a test, just a test cutting head for a few seconds. But as typical, we're not ratted in and the water is off. <laughs> it's one of those things you find out quick. Is it running? Okay. Test. Next. So if water's coming out, it, you know it's not clogged anymore. So then we're going to remove the nozzle again. and flip it back around. Push it up till it stops, tighten it up. The torque wrench is set to, not sure what it's set to. Now we need to put the tube back in, pass it through the standoffs. If you lower the Z slightly, you have better access to the, the nozzle. And you should be able to continue on your way as if you had done a startup to make sure that the material is flowing. And it should be unclogged. Right. Oh. Simple thing. Yeah, I don't know how much.
much of this. You can put the rubber cup back on and con continue cutting. Set your Z height 